Hey guys, this is the mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today as I take a deeper look into the most recent episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville season 6 episode 7. This is not going to be a full episode recap because there are plenty of other content creators who do a great job covering the show. Instead, I'm going to focus on specific segments of the episode that I believe could be used as teachable moments for myself and the audience. So for this commentary, I'm going to go through the cast members and discuss their scenes. And I'm going to start with Kimmy and Maurice. Kimmy and Maurice are having a discussion about Munster, who is Maurice's child and Kimmy's stepchild. Munster is not listening to Kimmy. Munster is a teenager. You know, Maurice has taken full custody of Munster for the past couple of years, which is why he wanted to marry Kimmy, in my opinion. Um, he wanted to place the brunt of the responsibilities, the child-rearing responsibilities, on Kimmy, which is why after seven years of dating, all of a sudden, he had an epiphany and was like, wow, she's wifey material, okay? He wanted to use Kimmy as a surrogate mother for himself. So Kimmy's upset because when she tries to enforce discipline, and when she tries to get uh, Munster to do his chores, he doesn't listen to her. He dismisses her. And Maurice is not backing her up enough. And he's essentially blaming her for the fact that his son is not listening to his stepmother. Okay, essentially, Munster is treating Kimmy the way that he sees Maurice treating Kimmy like a housewife doormat. Okay, he's not listening to Kimmy because he sees Maurice not respecting or listening to Kimmy the way that he should be. Right? If you guys remember, last season, Kimmy complained about having to do all of this stuff in the house. And Maurice would just, you know, sit back and expect and wait for sex when she was done cooking and cleaning and working and maintaining the household and taking care of his child. This is why in seasons one and two, Kimmy was like, I don't, you know, want to do this. I don't want to be a stepmother again. I've raised my child, Jalen, by myself. Because again, Maurice did not marry Kimmy after the first year or second year or third year of dating. He married Kimmy after seven years of dating when Jalen was done with college, okay? And when it was time for him to take full custody of Munster from Kiowa. That was a big selling point for him. You know, I want to be a father. I want to be a dad. I want to be there for my son. He's at the age now where he needs discipline and a male father figure, role model, whatever. He's not doing that. He's not doing that. Maurice is not disciplined, so his son is not going to be disciplined, okay? And to be honest, I low-key think that Munster does not really respect Maurice like that, especially if he sees the way that the household is being run. I don't know how it's being run, but Munster is seeing something in that house that makes him not respect Kimmy or his father that way, okay? So Maurice called Kaiwa in the middle of that conversation, and he was basically like, Kimmy is saying that uh, she can't discipline uh, Munster because she doesn't want to offend Kaiwa's mothering or parenting style. Kimmy does not want to discipline Stormy in the way that his mother would not. She's trying to respect the mother's boundaries. And Kaiwa said, that's correct. I think she's doing the right thing. Now, I personally don't agree with that 100% because that kind of ties Kimmy's hands behind her back. Because Maurice is not supporting her and Kyle was not there. I think that if Kimmy is responsible enough to feed your child, to clothe your child, to house your child, she's not abusive, she's responsible, she's nurturing, she's a nurse, and you trust her enough to do all those things, I think she should be trusted to discipline Munster in a way that is conducive to that situation that she's in. Because Munster is not at home in Detroit with his mother. He is in Huntsville with his stepmother. So the way that Kyra would discipline him may not work in that setting. So I think that Kyra needs to trust Kimmy and Maurice to discipline the child in the way that they see fit to get the outcomes that they want. Because it's obvious that the way that Kyra would discipline Munster is not effective. I don't know what kind of discipline he needs, but Maurice is like a hands-off father in my opinion. So when you have a hands-off father, the, the child is not really going to respect you like that. The child's going to see you as somebody who just, you know, being performative. Yeah, son, I want to hang out with you. Yeah, son, we're doing a man thing today. But he doesn't see that 
on a daily basis. He sees Kimmy managing the whole household. He sees Kimmy being the responsible one. Again, I do appreciate the fact that Maurice was there supporting Kimmy when she was sick. But I am not oblivious to the fact that uh, Maurice needs Kimmy. He needs her either financially, emotionally, or to be a stepmother to his child. So it was it was in his best interest to make sure that he was there for her as a husband while she was recovering from cancer so that she could be the stepmother he needs her to be for his child because he has no intention from what I'm looking at of being the dominant parent in this situation. He's always put the brunt of the responsibility or the bulk of the responsibility on Kimmy's back to maintain the household and to raise his child, which is not fair. It's not fair. Kimmy's cooking. She's cleaning. She's sexing him. She has her own job. Like, what is Maurice there for? Companionship and penis? And this is what ends up happening to black women when they get to a certain age, right? Mid-40s to late 40s, you know, they want a partner. You know, some of them have never been married. So they're idealizing like this happily ever after with this unicorn black man who's going to come in and save the day and provide them with companionship, love, and penis and support. And most of the times, these men don't marry women unless it benefits them. Most of the times, men of Maurice's age do not marry women unless it benefits them socially, financially, or uh, sexually, okay? So these men aren't marrying women because they want to be daddies and husbands. They're marrying women because they need someone to support them. That's what happens with men of Maurice's age bracket. He already got divorced from somebody else, and he was hoeing around for years. Kimmy was not good enough to be a wife until it was time for him to get custody of his son. And it's obvious, Kimmy raised her child, Jalen, by herself. Didn't ask for child support. Didn't ask for alimony. Like, Maurice was not going to be on the hook for anything regarding Jalen. All he could do was offer Jalen some bullshit-ass advice. And Jalen was looking at him like, Nigga, who you talking to? My mother is Kimmy. My mother is very self-sufficient, very um, hardworking, very organized, very disciplined, right? She's a good woman. She's nurturing. She's professional. She's successful in her own right. She did it all by herself. Who are you to come along and tell me anything? It looked as if Maurice was interested in sort of like the optics of parenting versus actually being a fully present parent. Even to the point of like forcing Kimmy to have a conversation with Kaiwa instead of him managing the situation on his own. So I think the main reason why Kaiwa and Kimmy had an issue initially is because of Maurice. Maurice did not handle that situation properly between them and then that forced like or that created a wedge between Kaiwa and Kimmy that Kimmy had to clean up and now I gotta raise your child for you too while you sit here and low-key blame me for your child not listening to me when your child's only emulating and imitating what his father's doing to his stepmother so yes it did not escape me that Maurice only married Kimmy after he wanted to take full custody of his son Because he did not want to raise his child by himself. He didn't want to cook for him. He didn't want to clean for him. He did not want to be the dominant parent. He wanted to marry somebody who had the ability to do all those things while he gets sex and comfort. Whatever he wants to. Maurice has a high sex drive. The past couple of seasons, Maurice talked about not getting enough sex. But I've never heard him complain about not having enough time with his son. Not doing enough activities with his son. Because if he were doing more activities with his son, to be honest, I think that if someone listened to him more, he would have more respect for him, right? So it seems as if Maurice only wants to do the fun things with Munster. Take him to games, take him to the movies, whatever, right? Activities. Maurice has an issue with the day-to-day responsibilities and obligations of watching and maintaining a household for a child. That's what I think. And so does his brother, okay? Because... They grew up watching their mother do all the work in the house while the father, you know, worked two, three jobs. So the mommy was responsible for the household and the dads were out working. The difference in this situation is Kimmy doesn't need Maurice's money. And in my opinion, I honestly believe that Kimmy makes more money than Maurice. So she doesn't need it for anything but companionship and penis. And I think that Munster sees that. He's aware of it. Kids are aware of things. So he's not going to listen to Kimmy. He's going to do what he wants to do. Why would he listen to stepmother? There's no consequences being enforced, right? He'll just adjust and adapt. Kimmy and Kaiwa and Maurice have to consider new ways of enforcing discipline on their child, okay? Because the way that Kaiwa would do it, 
the way that Kaba would do it would not work in this situation because Kimmy is not Munster's mother. So there's a different dynamic there. It's not fair to say, I want you to discipline the way I would, but I trust you to do all the other work. Kimmy has proven to be trustworthy. She's proven to be responsible. She's proven to be caring and nurturing and more considerate of Munster's needs than his own father. She should be given some carte blanche here when it comes to disciplining Munster because she did a good job with her son Jalen by her damn self. Okay? And I think that Maurice is kind of leaning on her to raise his son the way that she raised Jalen who finished college. He wasn't, you know, smoking weed or doing whatever. He wasn't committing crimes. I'm not sure if he was or not, but he is, you know, a productive citizen. And she raised him by herself. I think that Maurice is leaning on her to do the same thing for his son without really giving her credit for it and making it harder for her to do that. Because now she can't raise him the way that she would have raised her own child because Kyra was in the picture. And he's not going to make it easier for her to discipline him because he doesn't have any rules himself. Speaking of no discipline, Maurice and Martel are having a conversation. Martel's dressed up for what? I don't know. Why does Martel always seem to look dressed up but has nowhere to go? Like, real business people don't wear suits and ties every day. Sometimes they wear slacks, t-shirts, jeans. It's like, you know, the men on the show are performative everything. Performative husbands, performative fathers, performative entrepreneurs. Like, it's just all a fucking show. Anyway, so Martel lies about Melody again acting as if Melody was wrong for kicking him out of Milani and Boss Baby's birthday party, even though Martel had no gift and he had no intention of basically spending time with his daughter. He just wanted to show up and take credit for Melody's hard work, energy, time, and money, and then act as if he's daddy of the year. So yeah, that's the gist of their scene. They're just full of crap. Another scene, Melody speaks to Tiffany about what happened with Martel at the birthday party. And as I discussed last week, Martel only showed up because he wanted to micromanage Melody. He wanted to control Melody. He wanted to see what she was doing. And he wanted to take credit for a party that he did not plan or pay for because it's all about looking like a good father rather than actually being a good father. So Martel could have cashed out Melody $500, whatever, $1,000 for whatever. I don't know how much it costs to throw that particular event. But he could have sent her some money or at least brought a gift or two for his children. And he didn't even do that, right? He showed up empty-handed expecting to do a photo op with his daughters so that he can go to court and say, see, I'm a good father. So he can go on social media and say, see, I'm a good daddy. Melody's is tripping and bitter and jealous, right? She's a difficult one. So Martel wanted to make Melody look bad on her own dime. He wanted to make Melody tolerate him (laughs) <laughs> take credit for her work and make her look bad on her dime okay he wanted her to pay for him making her look stupid he wanted melody to basically put the bill for being uncomfortable at her own daughter's birthday parties right so martel showed up empty-handed and melody kicked him out melody told martel at the party you can pick her up after one o'clock from one to two to three to four, to five, to six, to seven, to eight, to nine. You can hang out with your daughter. That's nine hours of fun. The party that she threw for the kids was like, what, four or five hours? So you have her for the bulk of the rest of the day. I remember one year that Martel had like a little birthday celebration for his daughter. And it was like a little cake, a little birthday cake, some cake that he had at a restaurant, some slice of cake that they were eating together, something like that. And Martel was acting like he was doing something big by uh, buying a slice of cake for his daughter who missed him, okay? That was a grand gesture of love and support for his daughter. I'm not saying that Martel is as bad as Maurice as far as like being around the kids, but Martel is also a performative father. He knows that his relationship with the children is the only way he can control Melody. He knows that he can use the children to control Melody. Okay, so Martel showed up empty handed. Melody kicked him out. And then Melody was like, yeah, you can pick him up now. He's telling his daughter, no, I can't pick you up. He told his daughter to her face, no, I can't pick you up. And he sounded real humble. He wasn't yelling. He wasn't screaming. He wasn't indignant. He wasn't angry. He wasn't pissed off. He wasn't upset. 
It was like, nah, you know, I can't pick you up today. What do you have to do that's more important than spending time with your daughter when you were just acting as if Melody kicking you out of the party was like a sin against nature? It was a crime against humanity. It was Melody being difficult. The reason why Melody is not like being around Martel is not because Melody is bitter. It's because she doesn't like him. She doesn't trust him. He's manipulative. He's a gaslighter. He will show up to her party that she paid for, try to take credit for it. And then to make matters worse, he has his daughter, his daughters waiting in anticipation for him to pick them up after the party to have another celebration. That's a wonderful thing, right? As a kid, oh, I'm going to have one party for my mommy with my mommy and I'll have one with my daddy. So now, you know, the children are excited. We have two parties in one day. That's great. Martel lets them down and Melody is left to pick up the pieces like she always does where Martel fails to meet his parental obligations, okay? So last week I said that Martel has no concern for his children per se. I said that Martel is only concerned about using the children to manipulate and control Melody. Martel was trying to um, take custody of the children from Melody before the divorce was even finalized. He's threatened to do this. Before Melody and Martel separated completely, right, and they were still living in the same house, Martel threatened to take custody, full custody of the children because Melody was wanting everything her way, according to him, okay? So before they got divorced, Martel made a proposition to Melody. He said, you know what? Instead of you leaving or instead of me leaving, why don't we live together? I live downstairs and you live upstairs and then we can go about our lives, right? And keep the children in the same household. Even though they had a second house that was fully furnished, Martel insisted on staying in the same house with Melody because he wanted to make sure the kids were okay. Not because he wanted to control Melody, um, not because he wanted to stay married to her, not because he wanted to sneak and snake his way back into her life, but because he wanted what was best for the children. But in season two, Melody already peaked game. She was like, no, I don't want you in the house with me or these children. I want you gone. I want you in a whole new space. If you care about what's best for the children, let me stay here with the kids and you live in a separate house. You take your big grown ass to our other home and let me maintain this home and the stability for the children. I'm paying the bills anyway. So if you don't want to uproot your children because you care about them so much, why don't you leave Martel? And Martel did not do that. Not only did he force Melody to leave the home, he made sure she could not take any furniture from their second home with her. So the children that he cares so much about were sleeping on the floor, okay? Martel made it very difficult for Melody to give the children stability because he forced her to move into a new place with no furniture. And now he wants to show up years later, empty handed, with no contributions to the party except more stress and more aggravation and disrespect, right? He shows up empty handed. Melody says, get out. You don't pay for anything. Why are you even here? He says hi to his daughters. He makes a big scene to make it appear as if he's fighting hard for his children. That's what he wanted to do. The big scene of him shouting and yelling, it's not your business either. He was doing that to make it seem as if he was fighting hard for his children because he loved them so much. Okay. And then I think he texted his children that he couldn't see them because of his mother, because of their mother. Right. But Melody calls after the party. Yo, Martel, you can get the kids now. Oh, I can't see you. No yelling, no anger, no nothing. Just manipulation, just gaslighting, just not giving a fuck about the kids at all. And now Melody has to pick up the pieces of their, of her daughter's disappointment because they were looking forward to their father picking them up after the party. Did Martel mention this in court? Martel keeps talking about the court is ruling in his favor. The courts do not account for psychological and emotional abuse of children. All they care about is financial abuse, sexual abuse, and like uh, sustenance, food, cleanliness, um, whether or not the children being abandoned, fine. But psychologically and, and emotionally abusing the mother, the courts don't care about that because it's not quantifiable. So the courts only care about whether or not the father is physically abusing the children, right? Whether or not he's sexually abusing them and whether or not, you know, they're in a dirty home or whatever. That's all they care about. So Martel thinks that he's winning by doing the bare minimum. The family court system needs to be updated to account for psychological and emotional abuse. Because those things are just as detrimental as physical or sexual or financial abuse. Okay? 
Because if a mother is having a mental breakdown due to her ex-husband's mental abuse, she won't have the wherewithal to raise her children properly, right? And then Martel can say, see, she's too depressed and stressed out to raise our kids. She, she's a bad mother. She won't even be there for them. She's too tired. She's too this. She's too that. Martel tried to break Melody down to make it hard for her to divorce him, right? To destroy her self-esteem, to break her spiritually, and to make it seem as if he's a better father, okay? So Melody does not like him. That's why she said, I, I wish I married a man or had a babies by a man, not a queen. Every single episode, he shows how much of a bitch he actually is on purpose. And then he goes to Maurice and like lies about everything. Carlos King needs to have one or two episodes per season where the cast is responding to or reacting to the scenes on the show because Martel is a pathological liar. He's a liar. Melody can't stand him. She can't trust him. He's not trustworthy. And she is right to, to not want to have any communication with him whatsoever. She can't be comfortable around him. He will always try to find a way to disrespect her boundaries, to control her, to manipulate her, to lie on her, to abuse her, to take credit for what she's doing for her children at the same time, calling her a bad mother. Like, it's too much shit going on. Martel is a very nasty person. He does not care about those kids the way that he wants people to think he does. It's all optics for him. And as soon as those children get old enough to see what's going on in a peep game, Martel's going to cut them off too. He's going to make those kids choose between him and their mother. Trust me when I tell you this. They're not old enough yet. Not yet. But once they get to 14, 15, 16 years old, they're going to see what it is with Martel. And Martel told um, Maurice that he didn't have any discipline at home or structure at home. I'm not surprised. Look at him. Melody had a very organized and structured life. Miss Marlene did not have that for whatever reason, right? And we can see that with his, his MPD disorder. Not respecting authority. Not following instructions having a low self-esteem and insecurities to the point where he will try to vindictively abuse a person who he has been abusing for decades, for over a decade. So Martel does not think that Melody has suffered enough because of him. He will continue to punish her for his shortcomings and his inadequacies and his incompetencies and his failures. So as long as she's blowing up and Melody's looking good and she's accomplished and successful and happier without him, he's going to make her suffer or try to make her suffer. Okay, Martel did not want to divorce Melody, not because he loved her, but because he enjoyed watching her suffer. He enjoyed having control over somebody who was more powerful than him. And Martel only had power over Melody because she loved him and she gave him that power. And once she took that power away, Martel was left buck naked and ashy and exposed as a fraud. That's why he's angry with her. Anyway, on to the next scene with the tea party, whatever. Um, you know, I really liked the mediator or the host of the party. She did a great job. The woman looked great. Miss Nell looked amazing. I loved her white on white. She looked beautiful. And I really want to see more of her on this show. We need a counterbalance to the ratchetness and the old, bitter, disrespectful, vindictive women. So Stormy's mother had a problem with Storm with Melody because she blamed Melody for allowing a false narrative to be spread about her daughter um, by Melody's fans. So a few weeks and months ago, I said that some of Melody's fans are doing too much. I said that by doing too much is going to backfire on Melody at some point because the people on the show, the cast, and some members of the audience are going to blame Melody for what her fans are doing. I, you know, I suggested to her fans, because I support Melody too, to fall back, right? You don't have to bully someone else to show support to Melody. That's not necessary. You don't have to bully any of the cast members or any of the people who don't like Melody to show support to Melody. You can like her without all of that. Because if you need to destroy some, if you need to hurt someone else or bully someone else or disrespect somebody else to show support to Melody, that's going to be a reflection on her, whether you think so or not. So, Melody's fans will be associated with Melody just like the Beehive is associated with Beyonce and the Navy is associated with uh, Rihanna and the Barbs are associated with Nicki Minaj. Like if the fans are unhinged and disrespectful and they're bullies, people are going to blame Melody for that. And Melody is not condoning this behavior. She's not saying this is what you should be doing. She's like fall back, right? She said it more than once. Like, I appreciate the support, but guys, you know, we need prayer and not 
this ratchet stuff, okay? It's going to backfire on Melody because people will justify their hatred for Melody um, by way of her stance. So they'll use the stance behavior to justify not liking Melody. They'll say that Melody's fans are a reflection of her character. That's how this works, right? So if you want to support Melody, just fall back. I understand we're interested in the show. I get it. Sometimes sometimes stories get blown out of proportion. Things are miscommunicated. You know, I get it. I understand a thousand percent what happens. I've made mistakes on my, my platform as well. Not intentionally, but this happens, okay? The goal is not to use misinformation to bully other members of the cast because you don't like them, right? That's unnecessary. We got grown people out here doing too much. And this is one of the reasons why Martel was like, he doesn't want the kids on the show. I understand that. Because someone used their hatred for Melody to justify insulting his child, Sugar Mama, their child together. So Martel can now say, well, Melody, you know, her fans or Melody's uh, social media platform or her brand is jeopardizing the children. Because now our children are going to be attacked by her haters. And that's kind of what happened before, even with Miss Wanda, right? So it's not Melody's fault per se, but the cast is going to blame Melody because Melody is not does not have the time to check everybody for their bad behavior. So that's what happened. But anyway, Stormy's mother wanted to be disrespectful. She wanted an excuse to tell Melody to shut up. Okay? That's what she came to the show to do. To act a fool. And put Melody in her place. The way she wanted to put Melody in her place two years ago. Three years ago. She said Melody was passive aggressive. I've said Melody was passive aggressive before. That's not a mystery. Right? But the problem is, Melody is now being blamed for something that her fans are doing. Melody loves her fans. Her fans love Melody. I support Melody also. The reason why I don't do the stand thing is because this is what happens when you have group think. And when you have a group of people who think the same way, um, sometimes they can think themselves off a cliff. Like a bunch of sheep following each other off a cliff. No one has a leadership or the presence of mind to say, this is too much. When you're part of a stand group or click or herd. That's what happens a lot. When you have cults, religions, you know, political affiliations, stand wars, like people only see what they want to see. And so when there's disrespect or there's bullying, the stand group won't call it out because they don't want to be ostracized from the group. There's a fear of being accused of not liking Melody because we don't like the way that her fans are acting. So because I don't like the way you're acting as a bully, that means I don't like Melody now. Listen, at one point I was accused of being on Melody's payroll because I was one of the first youtubers to be like really behind melody like supporting her there were several of them who were doing this um bonnie blue was one of them miss misha color me pink um there was a few of them that were like really down for melody from the beginning so there was that's what it is but i remember people accusing me of being melody on melody's payroll so sometimes the viewers the people in the audience in the comment section they'll tend to jump down my throat thinking that they're informing me about something that I made them aware of in the first place months ago. They just don't know it because, you know, when it comes to social media, people pick up things and they disseminate it and it becomes a part of the discourse. And, you know, you don't know where you're getting your ideas from because it's being passed around. So people are repeating things to me that I've already said over a year ago, thinking they're telling me something because they don't like what I said about Melody, right? That group thinks shit here. And that's what irritates me because... It's like you can't, you can't, you can't provide critical, rational discourse about something without people accusing you of attacking someone, of hating someone, right? And that's not right. That's not right. That's not fair. So now in a situation with Stormy's mother, she's like, Stormy, Melody should have checked her fans. Basically, Stormy's mother was mad at Melody because she felt Melody was responsible for allowing um, this false narrative to propagate around social media. And Melody didn't spread that rumor. Her fans did. They took a molehill and made it into a mountain. They took a seed and made it into a damn forest. Right? Now on to Kiki and Tiffany. Kiki speaks out of both sides of her mouth. She did disrespect Tiffany by saying, I know who my daddy is. But Tiffany is acting as if Kiki is like public enemy number one. And Kiki is not good enough of a woman to be even associated with. That was the problem. It was almost like 
I'm you're you're not good enough for me to even consider an associate. You are a genuinely bad person. You have no redeeming qualities whatsoever. If you would do this to your own cousin, like your character is just flawed. It was giving a bit contemptuous, and that's why Kiki was triggered. But Kiki, her energy was on 110. And the host was like, yo, a lot of times black women enjoy attacking each other. We don't enjoy discussion. We enjoy the clap back. This is why last year when I mentioned the sweetie comment with Stormy and Destiny, I said it wasn't that serious for me. I said that Stormy wanted an excuse to correct or check Destiny. Destiny's tone, in my opinion, was not abrasive or disrespectful when she said sweetie. Sweetie is many different things. Sweetie can be sweetie, can be sweetie. Like you can say it in, you know, in a daring way. You can say it to put somebody on notice. You can use it as a nickname. You can use it as an ad lib, like, like a comma. Hey, sweetie, right? But, you know, because people didn't like Destiny at the time, they were jumping down my throat saying, oh no, sweetie is disrespectful. You don't know what you're talking about. Months later, oh, you was right about Stormy. Really? I was? I'm not saying Stormy's a bad person. But, um, yeah. I think that a lot of black women are eager for, or they anticipate, or they look forward to the opportunities to check somebody. Like Stormy's mother, like Stormy, like Kiki, like Tiffany. A lot of us like being able to tell somebody, another black woman, that they're wrong, that they ain't shit, that, you know, dragging them, whatever. We consider it a witty banter to disrespect and verbally abuse other women. So there was a lot of tension in the room and you know, I wish that they had more time to talk out their issues, but Kiki was getting too disrespectful. Was it me with the space too small? That table was too small. I wish they would have had, they were in a larger space or had a round table or something. All the ladies look good, but I think that the settings, the setting, the, the space was, I didn't like it. Um, I don't know. It wasn't, I don't say dainty, but it didn't fit. It was too crowded. It was too tight. It was too bland. Something was off. So anyway, I didn't mean to offend anybody. You know, I'm not trying to offend anyone. That's not my objective. I just want to call things out the way I see them. Okay. And a lot of people have gotten out of hand when it comes to the show from season two it started getting real crazy all right but anyway i look forward to reading your feedback please like share and subscribe and i will speak to you soon